Hi everyone, it's Wayne Dixon here for cgcookie.com. Now today, I wanna to give you a few tips on polishing your animation. That means when we get to the end, we've done all the hard work, our animation is finished, but it's not quite finished. We just wanna add those extra final little touches to bring it from here all the way up to here. So here's a few practical tips on what you can do for your work. All right, so here we are, we're inside Blender and we're looking at some work done by Holly DiPetrello. She's one of our animation students at cgcookie.com. Uh, so let's, uh, she's given me permission to have a look at this, but we're gonna, we're gonna watch it and then we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna give her some advice on, on how, or if it was my work, what I would do to actually polish it. And that's the information I want you guys to extract from this. It's not looking at this and, and looking at all the faults. It's like you looking at what I'm doing and then applying that to your own work. All right, so let's have a look at our animation. Never insult. Albus Dumbledore in front of me. One more time. Never insult Albus Dumbledore in front of me. Okay, she's done a really great job. So uh, the tip number one for everybody, not just for Holly, uh, for everybody, is I want you to save your work and save often when you're doing the polishing uh, stuff. That is because um, I want you to do a little bit of experimentation and cleaning the curves as we go, which I'll explain in a moment. But if we happen to go down the wrong path and it doesn't turn out to be better, we can just go back a few minutes to that save point and start again without trying to revert what we've just what we've just done. So if we make, make a mistake, we can just come back. Alternatively, if the changes that we've made have been great, then you save it and that's your new starting point. So that is tip number one. All right, so when I saw Holly's uh, animation, I actually noticed a few uh, spacing errors in the, in the torso in a few of those spots. Now, the more practice you have at animation, the better the, your eye gets and the more you're able to see this stuff. Uh, so that's where practice comes in. But there was a few points where I was um, uh, where, where I noticed it. So uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I turned on the motion paths for the chest and the, uh, the torso control here. And I just zoom in. And it's a good idea to watch your animation in fast forward, watch it in slow motion, scrub forward, scrub backwards, so you can really get a sense of what's going on at all different uh, speeds. So the problems that I was seeing, if I zoom all the way in here, you can see that this, um, the spacing on the, on the chest here is a little bit wobbly, especially around this kind of area here. Um, where, you, where you can see I've zoomed all the way in here. It's gone a little bit zigzaggy. So that's the stuff that we want to get rid of. We're, we're looking for uh, it to be smooth when we want it to be smooth and sharp and, and zigzaggy when we want it to be sharp and zigzaggy. So as the animators, we need to figure out when we want each of those uh, things to happen. But uh, I've noticed that problem in the chest, but we can't go ahead and fix it in the chest first because we need to start from the most important part of the character and work out when we're polishing. So that's the, my second tip, is to start at the middle, or the middle of the character, which is the torso, and work out. Now why? Because if we do all this polishing on our chest, and then we go down and we polish the, uh, the torso, or the, or the hip control, then we've actually undone all this, um, these, these changes that, that we've made. So we've actually you know, undone all our good work and we have to do it again. So it's important to do it in the right order. All right, so uh, let me jump into the graph editor and show you what to look for. All right, so now it's time to start polishing our actual curves. So I'm starting at the torso and I wanna do this for every control moving outwards, all the ones that are, that are connected. Uh, otherwise, as, as I said, we're gonna undo our good work. So I wanna work uh, in sections, and by sections I mean translations first and then do all the rotations together. And the first thing I wanna look for is some obvious problems. The more experience you have, the better you get at recognizing what the shapes should, should look like. So I'm looking at our three uh, translation curves, X, Y, Z, and the first thing that I'm actually noticing is this handle that, that's out of whack here. And if I scrub through here, uh, let's zoom in and see what that effect is. So we're looking at the, um, uh, it's around here between 30 and 38. So what does this do? This is actually the, um, you, you see how that makes an S shape there? If I just rotate this around, smooth it out, to try and make it kind of like a, a nice smooth um, curve, and then I update what's happening inside our um, uh, viewport here, you can see I've smoothed that out. So that's the type of stuff that we wanna look for on all of our curves, so look for obvious shapes like that. I'll go through a few obvious ones in a moment, but the most important thing that I want everyone to be aware of is you must look at what's actually happening inside the 3D viewport when you're doing this. You can't just look at the, at the graphs and change them and then not pay attention to what happened because that little kink might have actually been there intentionally. So uh, yeah, you can't always just smooth it out willy-nilly. You actually need to pay attention to what's going on. All right, let's do another one. Uh, I've noticed before when I made a little note for myself that there's a little bit of a, 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 a kink. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit on here. So just 
watching the, the hips move in, in and out there. Wobble, wobble. Can you see that? Wobble, wobble. That's happening around here. So let's have a look at what the cause of that is. So I'm looking for a shape, and it kind of looks like, if I'm looking at this red curve here, that it's kind of wanting to be somewhat of a sine wave, some nice shape like that. But then this curve here, or this keyframe, is kind of out of whack. So if I move this one up, scale it down a little bit, uh, and then smooth it out. And then I up update by recalculating. You can see that I've smoothed all that uh, double uh, wiggle woggle. Is that a word? Yeah, I just invented a new word, but I've smoothed it out. Again, now I'm gonna watch what's happening. Watch it over and over. Yep, let me just mute that, because it's annoying me. Um, Yes, so I have fixed that problem. So now I would save it and then move on to the next one. So what I want to do is work from uh, the torso out, doing all the um, all the translation curves and all the rotation curves. Yes, every single curve. Yes, all the controls that are visible, every single curve. If you want your animation to be good, you need to polish your work. All right, another uh, common shape that I'm kind of paying attention to, if I see this shape inside the graph editor, I'll just uh, draw it here. So say if we've got something coming up quite sharp, and then it stops like this, and then comes back down. And we've got a whole bunch of keyframes uh, along the way, and obviously down here and down here. Now, we need to decide uh, whether this is the actual animation that we want. Say if this was, it depends on what body part it, it, what, it, that it's doing. So uh, if, say, this was an eyeball, and there was two frames between this one and this one, so and that just changed position over two frames, and then was static, that's probably what we want. But if it was a bigger body part, say the hips or an arm moving, something like that, um, it's going to have more momentum, and so it's going to need to go past where uh, we're the final position and come back. So I'm looking at this shape inside our graph editor, and, and my alarm bells are ringing in my head going, aha, it's flattening out too quick. I need to add some overshoot to this to kind of smooth it out. Now, how do we do that? There's a couple different ways that we can do it. So what we could do without moving any of the actual keyframes, we can just grab our handles. So that handle is obviously flat because it's flattening out. We can just drag it like this, drag this one like that, and then drag this one kind of like that. And that's gonna make a curve kind of do something like that. So that's gonna give it a little bit of, a, of an overshoot. Uh, alternatively, just undo that. We could just move this keyframe up, something like that, uh, depending on what it is. Or maybe the, the whole action needed to be different and this is flattening out for no reason and we actually want it to be kind of a nice smooth sine wave all the way over there like that. Now you need to decide as the animator what body part and, and you need to be looking inside your viewport to determine what type of animation it should be. But you will get better with that over time. But my point is start to look for the patterns that you're seeing inside the graph editor. My next tip is about the eye lines. Because of the geometry of the head or the, the character design, it can action, actually often look like the character is not looking where you think he's looking, or he or she or it, whatever the character is. Uh, so we need to pay attention by looking through the camera viewport and decide is that where it looks like he's looking and we might need to do some actual adjusting. So we can't just leave the eyes where we think they are, it's not set and forget, we need to pay attention to the eye lines. So in this animation, if I play it, uh, one thing that I can see is it looks like he's really bow-eyed, like his eyes are pointing in different directions outwards. So what we want to do is we want to drag them in a little bit, just so it gives the impression that he's looking at the actual camera. So how do we do that? It's really easy. I'm just going to select our X curves on our eye control here, and I'm just going to drag it, whoop, I'm going to drag it up. And I'm, going to, I'm paying attention to what's happening inside our viewport, in this one here, uh, until it looks like he is looking at the camera, actually probably gone a little bit too much, that's looking good. Now I'll grab this one, hide everything but the X, select everything and drag it down. And does that, no, it still doesn't feel right. About there, okay, so let's watch that. Now it looks like he's actually looking at the camera. So there we go, you just need to pay special attention to those eyeballs and those eye lines. All right, so before we call our shot final, we need to make sure that we're actually animating everything that we want to be animated in our shot. So in this particular one, I know when the character says Albus, uh, Holly isn't actually animating all the tiny little controls on the eyebrow here. So let me just have a look. Insult, Albus. So when, he, when the character says Albus, I think it'd be really great to get some shape to the eyebrow. But when I zoom into that part, uh, where is it? I can see that there's actually no animation on these controls at all. So in our polishing, we want to make sure that we're 
actually animating all the little tiny controls as well. So what I would do for this is I would select all of these controls and yeah, I can see there's actually no animation on there, but I would add it just hitting I and then I would make sure it gets all gets involved there. So I would go, so this is the Albus. So I want it to go up here and move this a little bit closer, but I want to lower this. Where is my, there is my control. I want to lower this control and then add some actual animation or some shape on these controls as, as, as well. So I want to make sure that I'm controlling everything. And then uh, obviously in the polishing pass, I need to animate that coming back down. But you can see there, I've just, I'm, I've, if there's a control that I can add a little bit of detail to, especially in the polishing pass, that's when I'll add it. Uh, don't go ahead and do it all the final fine little controls early on because you're just going to have to make, make more work for yourself. So in our polishing pass, have a look at all the controls. Are we animating everything we want to be animated? All right, and my final polishing tip is actually what I like to call uh, experimentation. Remember earlier when I said I want you to save the file and save it often? Now once we've done all the polish and we're really happy, we've taken all our notes and we've fixed everything that we can possibly can, it's time to experiment. You've probably been watching the animation a thousand, hundred thousand times or whatever, and you probably thought, oh, I wonder what would happen if I get his shoulder involved in that point. Would that look better? So now is the time for experimentation. You've saved your file, then you go to that spot, and you grab those controls uh, and then you experiment. So uh, we've, we've got our file saved, so it doesn't matter if we, we, we spend 10 minutes going down this path and we, we decided, oh, he, I made his shoulder look worse. It doesn't matter because we can just go back and we've got that file perfectly saved. So look over your animation and experiment. Ask yourself, what if? What if I included this control or what if I changed it? What if, I, what if his hand went down faster in, in a certain spot? Just give it a go, see what happens. So there we go, there's a few tips for you. Hopefully it helps you polish your animation work, everyone watching at home. Uh, so I'll just go over them again. First of all, my first tip was save your work and save it often. When you've made an improvement, then that's your new save point. And so if you make a mistake, you can always come back to that point uh, and you haven't wasted all that, that time trying to fix what you broke. Uh, the next one is make sure that you clean your curves. That means going through each control that you're animating and making sure that there's nothing out of whack. Uh, that is, yes, every control. You must do this for every control. And remember, we want to start from the torso and work outwards because we don't want to be undoing any of our polish work as we go along our way. Uh, the next was our eye lines. Make sure that we're, we're making the character's eyes actually point where we think they're pointing because we can't just set and forget. And then I think um, finally the, um, the eyebrow controls and stuff like that. So when we're looking at our animation, we need to see, are we animating all of the controls that we want to be animating? Is there any more fine detail that we can get in there? If we can add it, now when you're doing the polish is the time to add it. Uh, but the most important point is all these changes that you're making when you're, uh, when you're polishing your animation, make sure that you're paying attention to what's happening inside the viewport. You can't just clean the curves and move things around willy-nilly and smooth things out. You need to pay attention to what's happening from the camera viewpoint. Uh, it can look weird from other angles, it doesn't matter, but ultimately what the audience sees is the camera point of view. So you can't just smooth it out because you might end up making it look worse. But there we go, hopefully that's some, uh, some tips that you can take home and put to your memory bank. There's heaps more to learn over at cgcookie.com, but thanks for watching.